Now I'll tell you a little bit about the corals. The first interesting fact is the coral is actually an animal, not a plant, which really spins people out because they look so cosmic. But the coral, being an animal, does actually rely on little algae called zooanthellae that grow within the coral, which not only give the coral its colour, but allows the coral to use the light energy as an actual food source. So basically, the coral is an animal, the coral has the little algae within it, which rely on light, so we must have enough light. We also must have enough water flow to wash away the waste from the coral and also to bring new nutrients to the coral itself. A coral is a sensile organism, which means it can't actually move. So wherever you position the coral in the aquarium is where it's pretty much going to stay. On the other hand, there's also fungi, which look just like a coral and excrete calcium carbonate bases, but they can move along the bottom. There's also anemones, which look similar to fungi, and the anemones have got a soft foot and they don't excrete the calcium carbonate base, and they can move anywhere they want around the aquarium including up the walls and the sides of the aquarium. But the anemones are not corals. There's also starfish and urchins and cucumbers and all these other things that you can put into your reef aquarium, which are beside the coral themselves. The two main types of corals that you're likely to be involved in are soft corals and hard corals. Basically a hard coral is any coral that retracts into a hard calcium carbonate base. On the other hand, a soft coral will either contract or droop over, but into itself, not into a hard calcium carbonate base. So when a soft coral dies, nothing is basically left in that particular spot. Whereas a hard coral, when the coral dies, it's left with a calcium structure, which actually goes on to become live rock. You can really see that these soft and hard corals are really thriving in this aquarium very much because of the water quality, the strong life and the good water flow which is offered. Even in this case, the clownfish have mistaken this coral for an anemone. Now the anemone fish and the coral don't really have a symbiotic relationship, but confused clownfish will often go into the coral for their own protection. Just as we've got our one, two, three fish, we also have one, two, three corals. So, same thing. Ask when you're purchasing your corals. Make sure that your advisor is aware of the environment you're offering and make sure that they advise you before you buy them. Is this coral generally an easy coral to keep? Is this coral a coral that some people succeed with and other people don't succeed with? Or as a number three, is this coral one that normally doesn't work? It really helps to have an understanding before you purchase your corals, how hard the corals are to keep just as important as it is understanding how easy the fish are to keep before you purchase them. Now I've been called out to this aquarium because of a fear of a disease. Now um, she was quite concerned that there might be a disease or an infection going through her corals but all it really proved to be was a series of circumstances that seemed to cultivate pretty much at the same time. Now this aquarium has been running for quite a while but she's recently seen some downturn in some of the corals that she's keeping. So what I'll do now is just walk you through some of these little positioning points which we really want to be aware of. Now the first thing is the position of this tub of pora. Now with all of these really porous corals that have got a very porous structure to them, it's really important they don't build up with sediment because you will find that when they build up with sediment that they tend to gather denitrifying bacteria within them which can slowly release hydrogen sulfide which the corals obviously don't appreciate. So with a lot of these types of corals like the Tabapora, it's a really good idea to on a regular basis grab hold of it in your hand from underneath and give it a really good shake. Make sure that you get all of the mulm and the um, detritus out of the pores of this coral. This Tabapora is also right on top of an airstone. Be aware of where your airstones come up because a lot of the corals do get quite irritated by the um, constant massage of the air stone. Now in the far corner over here, we've got a Duncanopsomnius, which has obviously fallen off the top of the reef. Now this is a very regular occurrence with a reef aquarium, especially if you've got large fish. Now the large fish that are quite strong will often throw around and actually relocate your corals. So you really need to be checking on a weekly or twice weekly basis to make sure the corals are where they're supposed to be and that the fish haven't knocked them over. Because when you 